Yes. Hello all and welcome to Web Demo today. We would like to present you our new product, Kiss Design. So my name is Cengiz Yilmaz and I would like to show you today the following points of uh, Kiss Design. So I would like to uh, present you first uh, the interface of it. Then I uh, would like to show you how to model different stages uh, using Kiss Design. So um, we'll start first with a single gear stage, then um, using different methods, using first element box, then using especially the sketcher, which is a quite useful tool for building up uh, models. And then we'd like to have a look to the different sizing functionalities uh, in the software. Then I would like to continue building up um, the planetary stage, just to show you which possibilities we have there. And here I would like to use especially the sketcher again um, to show you how fast and simple it is uh, with it. Then next to me, uh, my colleague Michael Stangl is sitting here and uh, he would like to uh, show you the other, the next points, point three, four, and then also the RX import and export of a model. And uh, yeah, you have the possibility to write questions in the question window of the webinar tool. And uh, my colleague um, will answer them live during the demo in the first part. And then we will switch then the pres presenters during the demo uh, so that uh, Mr. Stangl I will show you the additional points and uh, I will answer the questions in the question window. Yeah. And then at the end of the web demo, we would like to handle a couple of questions um, which you wrote before and uh, we'd like to read them aloud for all and answer them also uh, that everybody can profit from the questions. Yeah. Okay, so First of all, before I, before I start with the interface, showing the, you the interface, I would like to first, um, yeah, answer the question: What is Kiss Design? So, in general, uh, we call it it's a concept tool uh, with a sketcher functionality, and it can be used to build up gearboxes in a very short time, and um, you can do fast calculations, strain calculations of the gear stages and shafts in Kisssoft. Uh, using KISS design. Yeah. So that's a description of what we uh, program, what we develop new of this product. And now about the capabilities, I would like to show you some examples before I start with the interface. So first, when you start KISS of 2019, we will have, we have a new part here in the modules, which is called system modules. And here uh, you can find KISS design new. And if I open with a double click this module, new system module KISS design, you will find the interface in this way. And first, I would like to show you uh, some possible, um, some finished models using KISS design, just to give you an overview about the possibilities. Let's open, for example, an industrial gearbox here. First, here you see already on the left hand side the shaft view of this gearbox with the different machine elements. In the middle, we can see the uh, sketch view of the gearbox in the sketcher. And in 3D, we can find the gearbox here, 3D. So this is, for example, uh, a possible uh, finished model which you could which you could build we build up in Kiss Design. We will see all the different steps which are possible here. This just should get, just give you an idea about uh, the possibilities. Another interesting model, maybe if I open from the examples here. We have also some examples. We have, for example, the four gear chain, which can be also built up really fast using KISS design, something like this. Or maybe as, an, as a really nice overview, a double clutch transmission. So you, you have, again, 
the sketch view, the 2D view of this gearbox with all the machine elements on it. And in 3D, this finished gearbox would look in this way. Yeah. So you can think about now a bit uh, what, what can be done in KISS Design, using KISS Design. And we have also the link to, this, to the existing KISS soft modules in KISS Design, which, which you can find here in the shaft view and in the transmissions. And we will come to these details in the next step. Okay, so just briefly to give you an overview about the possibilities. So let's start now with the interface, explaining you the interface. And uh, to explain you these points, I uh, would like to use a very simple model, just a one stage uh, gearbox. And I would like to open it from the examples here because the main idea is to show you the principles here and not uh, to start uh, with a complex model uh, and which, which can make things unclear. Yeah. So, this is my one stage gearbox. On the left hand side, I will start here with this uh, window. On the left hand side, we have the shaft view of, of this gearbox where you can find all shaft groups in the list. And in each shaft group, we have the different shafts. So we can also have multiple shafts in one shaft group, multiple coaxial shafts there. In this model, we have just one single shaft. And on this single shaft, we have all the machine elements, the couplings, bearings, and the gears on it. Second, shaft group also one single shaft with the machine elements on it so here you can find already these machine elements in, inside of the shaft groups and below in the calculations view we can find our transmissions our gear stages in this case we have one gear pair here which is the gear pair calculation from KISSoft and we have two gears reference to this uh, gear pair calculation, which is gear one and gear two. How you can do the reference steps, this I will show you just in the next couple of minutes. Yeah. So in addition to the transmissions, we have here in the calculations view some filtered information from the main model, like power flow. For each coupling which you add it to the model, you can find a boundary condition automatically here in the power flow selection and this means you can have the input and output conditions and at each coupling and these conditions can be later defined in a kinematic tab which i will show you just next the next steps if you for example would have a uh, would have a manual transmission gearbox where you have a different speeds then you would see the switching elements here in the switching elements window and um, for example, for the bearings here, we listed all the bearings which are used in a model here in the bearing selection. And if you have a bearing which is connected just to an inner shaft, you can find just one shaft in, in this bearing element. If there is a bearing which is a connection roller bearing between two shafts, you would see both shafts here. In this case, it's just a bearing which has contact with the inner race to the shaft. And with the outer race, it has the contact to a housing. That's why we see just one shaft. OK, <clears throat> then next to the shaft view, I can, we can find the element box, which where we can see all the elements categorized from shafts, gears, bearings, connections, forces, transmissions, which are the keys of calculation elements and the power flow. And using these elements from the element box, we can build up the model in the shaft view which these steps we'll also see in the next couple of minutes. And yeah, we can just uh, use these elements to build up the whole model. That's it. And this is everything what you need. We don't have more to build up models using KISS Design. Yeah. Then in the middle section of the window, we can find first in the first step, the sketcher where you can find the 2D representation of the gearbox with the machine elements. And we can add also here manually some additional elements to these shafts, or we can create also new shafts, new shaft groups. This is also something which you will see later. Um, we can move some groups or 
some elements in these shafts in the sketcher view. We can rearrange things in 2D. So this is all possible if you switch to the moving mode. Yeah. More details about this will follow in the next couple of minutes. Then if I switch to 2, 3D viewer, you can find the graphical representation of the gearbox in 3D. Um, it's especially important or yeah, useful to check here the contacts of the gears, so the, the contact angles of the shafts in 3D. And uh, we have some more cap possibilities where you can set some cross sections using the different planes. Or you can do the animation, start the animation here. And a very nice tool, actually useful tool, is that you can also take the video of this animation just pressing on this what by pressing on this button. And then if you press again, it will stop the video and you can save it very well, like on the desktop, for example. Yeah. OK, so this is about the 3D viewer. Um, very useful for presentations and documentation of your work. Then in the kinematics tab, we can define the boundary conditions. We can give some uh, torque and speed values to the boundary conditions. In this case, we have defined the torque and speed at the input boundary, at the input coupling, coupling one, on shaft one. And the kinematics automatically calculated because all the definitions were done correctly and we don't have to press any button to do that. And under the ratio tab, you can find the number of T's and the ratios in an overview. If you like, you can also change these values, which we will do next when we build up the model new. Okay, so these are the four tabs, actually in the middle section of the window. On the right, right hand side of the window, you have an element editor, depending on, to, on which element you, you click, you can find a different window there and you can do some additional inputs for each element. For example, if I click on, the, on gear one, I could define the phase width, I could define the normal module directly here using this window. Uh, I could also do some additional changes here, as you see. Yeah. And this is true for all the different elements. Okay, then on the field below, you can find the basic results of the calculations for each pair and each shaft calculation would see the results here in an overview and uh, yeah we have some basic calculation we have special calculation results and messages and additional information which you can find here below yeah. so this is the main window description actually of the software and i would like to now start with the modeling part of our uh, presentation so we would like to model the single gear stage with the element box and then with the sketcher so this one you would like to see how to build up using the sketch uh, using the sketcher and using the element box in his design so i start a new file and first part is just to build it up with element box and i just use these elements here starting with the uh, shaft calculation this is my first main shaft calculation which has just one shaft in it and I start with the coupling, the bearing, the gear and another bearing on it. So first shaft already finished. I don't, you, you can see, I don't have to think about the different levels. There are, there is just actually two, le there are just two levels, the shaft calculation and the shaft level and I don't have to really click on this shaft since there is just one shaft it's automatically adding the elements to this shaft. So let's add the second shaft group and just add the elements which are be which belongs to this shaft. So starting with a bearing this time maybe, then the gear, second bearing and the coupling for the output. Now you see during this part where I clicked on these elements, it's also creating my 
shafts in the sketcher automatically. So this is also possible vice versa. So I can also I could also add some elements here in the sketcher and it, they would be shown in the shaft view as well. Yeah. So now it's time to add the transmission. So now I have to create the stages and I just have to know which calculation I need here in this model. And here I have just one pair, gear pair calculation, which I need in Kissoft. I can just click on it. And then to create the references, let me click here. To create the references, I can just drag and drop gear one to this calculation and gear two. And the system creates automatically this pair and knows, okay, gear one and gear two belongs to this gear pair calculation. Yeah. So actually the model is already finished. Um, I can show you maybe also the bearings as a filter here, all the bearings and um, the belonging shafts. Um, what is also automatically created, you can see on the power flow, we have the boundaries automatically because uh, the two couplings, which is which are on the shafts. And if I check the sketcher view, maybe I can also rearrange a bit here that we have a better view. And let's check the 3D viewer. Yeah, the model is also well shown in 3D. And let's add some kinematic informations for the for the kinematics. So we have on coupling one of my input coupling, I would like to define the torque and speed values. And you see at the moment we have a ratio one to one. We have the same output conditions like the input conditions. And if I check the ratio, I can I could add, for example, some different number of T's here for gear two. Let's say we have 14 for gear two. And let's check kinematics again. It's automatically updating, as you see. And on the 3D viewer, it's also showing the new gear geometry according to my input. Yeah. So this is all for a one-stage gearbox, which is built up with the element box. Now, before I start to building up with the sketcher, I would like to show you maybe also the communication with the Kissoft. So you, as you know also, you, you know all these Kissoft modules. With a double click, you can start the module and enter your gear geometry and do your sizings, which we'll do later also together. And also the same is true for the shaft calculations. You can just make a double click, open the shaft, change your shaft geometry, and um, check your calculation. One additional information here, as you see, for each element which was added to a shaft, we create a new cylinder. And this is just on purpose. Now, for if you do a sizing, if you want to use a sizing functionality, each cylinder can be sized separately, or you could control each cylinder separately um, by changing the diameter and the length of them. So to go back to KISS design, again, just close the window and we are back in the design viewer. Okay, so this is how to build it up using the elements in the element box. Now we would like to do the same, just using the sketcher here. Just click on new file. And I start with shaft one here on the paper. It's like you draw your gearbox, you start with a double click, your line. And for each element which you want to put on this shaft, you have to create a new dot with a, with a normal click with a left mouse button. So for example, this is already one dot here. I could already attach an element. Um, let's say this is my coupling. Then maybe I need a bearing, a gear, and another bearing. And then I could finish the shaft with a double click or escape. And I can just select the axis of this shaft. So I created the first shaft. And now I can add on each dot, I can add a machine element 
here I start with the connection coupling, then I add a bearing, a Seneca gear, and the second bearing. Okay, so first shaft is finished. In the same way, I can create now the second shaft. Just I, I, I draw it in the same way. I start with a double click. I add an element, another element. So let's say I have I started a bearing. I have another bearing here, then another a second bearing here, and the coupling here. Then I stop with a double click and select his own axis again. And I add bearing gear bearing and coupling so as you see I could also add later additional elements so I can also increase this shot if I want this I would like to show you once I finish that so now both shafts are created and I would like to create the stages for this I just have to start with gear one should be also gear one on the Kisoft side and I can just drag and drop to the middle of the other gear and the stage is automatically created with the correct references to the gears. Now if I go to moving mode in the sketcher I can move the group wherever I want and let's check this in the 3D viewer here this is my generation in 3D I can even, if I want, increase my length of the shafts here, which has an influence also in 3D in, on Kisoft side. If this influence should be blocked, if you, you don't want to have this change, you can always lock this calculation and then a change here in the sketch will not affect the, the shaft calculation, will not affect my gearbox. Um, dimensions. So, but for example, if I want to add another bearing here, I could always just move here. I could always increase this shaft with another dot and stop with escape again and add another bearing here. I would have three bearings on this shaft, and we could also just move this dot move it away, move it a bit to the right and add some additional dots here in between if you like to add some additional elements. Like With a double click you can add a dot and add some additional bearings or a switching element or what else here uh, what you need. Yeah. For example, another bearing or we can delete them as well. Delete the dot which we don't need and we can move it back also. So this maybe I don't want to have. Did the dot as well, and then I have my arrangement again back. <laughs> so as you see, my gearbox in 3D, and I didn't give any kinematic conditions, so it will not run at the moment. So I have to define my kinematics, and I again want to give torque and speed on the first shaft, first coupling. And also define a specific ratio, for example, 60 this time. It's automatically calculating the kinematics, automatically updating it. And in the 3D viewer, I can have the updated gear geometry as well. Okay, so this is the way how you could create, how you could build up your gearbox using the sketcher explained um, in a very simple gear stage but uh, it's, it will be the same for any uh, kind of com more complex gear stages. Yeah. So now I would like to show you the sizing possibilities um, which we have now using KISS design. So you know already the sizing possibilities in KISS soft in the gear pair calculation I guess if I make a double click to this element we have the rough and fine sizing tools in KISS soft. This is mainly known to most of you, I guess. Like this, you could size your gear stages. And if you open 
the shaft calculations here you could size your shafts using the rough sizing tool where you won't have to enter the equivalent stress and the num required service life for the bearings and let's use the default values here for the demonstration and this would be my shape of the shaft considering the equivalent stress and this would be my bearings considering the required lifetimes yeah. for shaft one i could do the same for shaft two As you see here in this case, I would have the following shape of the shaft of the cylinders and the following selection of the bearings. For sure, you can do some adaptations using different bearings from the data, from case of database. Uh, you could also change each cylinder separately. Yeah, this is, these are additional options which the user can do manually. So I go, I close window and go back to case design and check my geometry. As you see, it's according to my geometry in KISSoft. Now I showed you how to do it separately. And in KISS Design, we have also the option to do the rough sizing of the system here uh, with a similar inputs like in the gear stages. This is like this is like an input from the coming from the rough sizing of the gear stages. And these are the inputs coming from the shaft rough sizing possibility in Keysoft. Yeah. Okay, so these are uh, the possibilities which you have for the modeling as a basic um, point of view. So we have the elements box and we have the sketcher possibility. And as I mentioned, uh, in each state of the modeling um, of the modeling process, you can add ele additional elements from the element but You can also add additional shafts in the sketcher. So I could, for example, create another axis here using the element box. And uh, I can just move it here down if I want. Yeah, and then I can add the machine elements to it, another coupling and connect it also, instead of connecting it here with the transmissions, I can also connect it here directly to this gear if I want. Yeah. I can also delete it here or I can delete it also here in the sketcher. Yeah, it's also gone in the element box, in the shaft viewer. Yeah. Okay, so this was a simple model um, using the two different methods. Now let's uh, build up a bit uh, more complex model, which is the planetary stage using the sketcher again. So we are here and I start from scratch. Just want to, to show you the advantages uh, of the sketcher. It uh, can be really easy to draw also complex gearboxes if you have a bit the knowledge how to create the shafts and the different gear stages. So I start again, I have two main axes for a single planetary stage. I have one axis where I have the sun, the ring shaft and the carrier shaft. And the second axis would be my planetary axis, which is a rotating epicyclic around the sun. Yeah. And first I create my sun shaft axis. So here my, I start my sun shaft. Then I add here a dot for the gear. And I stop with a double click and I create my sun axis here. Yeah. Then I add my second axis, which is the ring. Start here. This is the ring shaft. And I stop with a double click and use the same axis as the sun. And then I add my carrier axis, carrier shaft first. And as you see, I don't have to really always go to the right. I can also go down and then go to the right side again to create some hollow shafts, for example. And then I can stop again with a double click and now define the axis of this carrier 
shaft and this is the same axis like the sun and the ring shaft. Now I have all three shafts created with the same axis as you can also see here in the shaft view. So now let's start to create the second axis which is the planetary axis. So I have here my planet pin. Maybe make the dots a bit bigger. So then I can stop this with a double click and, and I can create his own axis. And I add my second shaft, which is the planet gear shaft. Planet gear body shaft. I stop with a double click and I use the same axis here. So we have now sun shaft, planet gear body, planet pin, ring shaft and carrier shaft defined. Then I add the gears with a uh, here, Seneca gear, the second gear on the planet gear body, and here the ring gear. Oop, this should be a gear like this, and it should be an internal gear, so internal tool thing. Yeah, as you see. We can see our geometry now. The planet is outside because we didn't define the carrier at the moment. So now it's time to define the carrier shaft. For the system at the moment, this is just a normal shaft like uh, all other shafts. But if I click here on this dot and add the planet carrier element here, then it's clear now this is my carrier. And to connect, to know, to, to, or to give the information to the system which axis is rotating with the carrier, I have to connect this carrier element. Here I have pick, pick it up with the left mouse button and connect it with the axis of the planet here. And you can see that this axis is getting green. And now it's clear for the system that, okay, the planet is connected to the carrier and this one is my carrier shaft and it's a planetary stage. So <clears throat> let's do the gear connections then as a next step. So I start with the sun gear and just connect it with the planet gear and connect it with the ring gear and it automatically creates the transmissions here as you see the planetary calculation planetary stage is created with the different gears this is my sun planet and ring gear and also with the reference to the carrier this is also clear now for the system yeah. let's add the couplings now for the correct kinematic definition. So here on the sun shaft, I would like to define the connection coupling here on the ring as well to define the speed of the ring and my output would be on the carrier. I would like to add some connection coupling on the carrier to have the output from the system there. Yeah. Now let's check the 3D viewer. Yeah, so now we see the arrangement is correct. Just the number of T's is not arranged from the beginning, this we can change later in the ratio tab, it's not a big deal. But the arrangement of the shaft is according our definition in the sketcher. So I could also go here and move it, move the carrier shaft away or make it less hollow, a bit more hollow. So if I move it a bit away, then you will see here the distance is also increased in the 3D viewer. I can also move it together that they are really coming together with the planet axis and this we can also see here in the 3d view now let's add some kinematic boundary conditions so since i want to have my input on the sun shaft so i say this is coupling one on shaft one which is the sun shaft and we add the torque and speed conditions so we say okay i have a given torque of 100 newton meter here and here and the given speed of 100 RPM. And I have to also define the another speed. So a planetary state needs always two speed and one torque definitions. And this is here, it can be done, for example, on, on the coupling uh, of the ring shaft. And let's say, okay, the, the ring is stationary and we have a speed of zero there. Finally, the kinematic conditions are calculated. So we have the output conditions for torque and speed on the carrier with these values here. 
Now let's check the different number of T's. So in order to have a working stage here, at least uh, we need to define 90 for number of T's for the ring. And then if I check the 3D viewer now, definition is done correctly. And we have correct arrangement. The calculation, if we go into KISOF, would be should be consistent if the detailed um, profile, reference profile, and so on are also defined correctly in KISOFT. So you see, we can define just by drawing the gear, uh, the shafts, the drawing, adding the elements, to, um, to drawing the whole stage with the mouse, we can define very complex kinematics as well. Uh, this is true for also different uh, type of planetary stages like compound planetary or revenue or warfrom uh, stages. So it's always the same principle as we mentioned just uh, before. Um, again, if you want to add some additional bearings, for example, here now, you can um, finish the model adding some additional dots for the elements. So here, for example, another bearing, another bearing just to show you all the different possibilities. And this would be also visible here yeah. in the 3D viewer. Yeah. So you can really first um, draw the main structure and then add the additional elements later as well. Yeah. OK, so um, maybe one additional point which I want to show you to change the number of the planets here for this planetary stage, we can add, we can go to the carrier and define the number of T's here for this element. And then you will have the, the respective number of planets for this planetary stage. Yeah. Okay, so these were my points actually and from this point on would like to I would like to switch to Mr. Stangel, Michael Stangel. Um, in the same time I would like to answer your questions so you can write questions uh, in the background still. Um, the presenter will be Michael Stangel and I will answer the questions. So now let's switch the first the presenter. And to read the questions later, I will be online again. Yeah. Hi, uh, how are you? From my side, um, oh, welcome. Also, I will uh, show, as uh, Mr. Yilmaz also mentioned, uh, the three lasting points. The first one will be the gearbox uh, with switch tables. So I will create a simple gearbox just to show the principle how to use uh, switchable elements inside and then uh, the second one will be I'll, you know, creating a more complex manual transmission gearbox with an assistant which is uh, much faster than just doing all things by clicking on the element box and uh, the third point from my side will be the REX import and export of a model. So let's start with a simple switchable gearbox. So I just use here now first the element box. So I create just a shaft with two gears on it and a coupling. And oh, I think I want to have it here first on the first position, the coupling, and then uh, a second shaft with um, another shaft on it, a coaxial shaft, which has a gear and a switchable element. And the same thing again. And of course, the coupling in the end, but that should be in the inner shaft, the shaft two, which you see here is red. So let's add it here. And uh, okay, I can put it a bit nicer here, doesn't matter. And then we can connect the gears as Mr. Yilmaz showed. And then I can now define the switchables because now currently you see the switching elements are just sitting on shaft three and shaft four, but I want to connect it with shaft two, which is the coaxial one in the center. So I can just take it and drop it to the dot 
So they are connected. As you see here, the switchable is defined by the connection or open a close connection between shaft two and shaft three. Or I can just add it here in the tree. So I take the shaft two and drop it to the switchable two. So it's defined. So this was it. It's quite easy. Now we, of course, we want to see something in, of the effect. So let's take, uh, I don't know, uh, there's another ratio here. Or let's take 50 and 35. So we can see it also in the 3D. Um, it's more more clear maybe if I just double click and show you that we just uh, the default length is connecting. So let's shorten this a bit. Okay. Now you see that this uh, coaxial shaft with the gear on it and the other coaxial shaft with the gear on it. And uh, the coupling is a bit behind. <laughs> Maybe I have, should, have, should have shortened it a bit more longer. Here you can see it if I increase the symbol size. So that was the modeling part. So let's say we have a kinematic like 100 Newton meter and 1000 rounds per minute. And of course, it's not yet defined. You see the kinematic is not calculating automatically through because yeah, there is no definition. We don't know how the logical uh, matrix is defined. And we have a nice feature there. We just um, press on this button and it is trying what kind of pass the power can take through the whole gearbox. So this is not very interesting for this small model, but believe me, it's also working for more complex and bigger ones. So if you have eight switchables or planetary gears inside, it's also doing the same thing. So you can see we have here the first and the second gear. And this in the 3D, you can see here, the power is flowing from here into the system, the dark blue gears and back outside here. And then the first gear, it's the other, the other pairing. So that's it more or less for the first example. I think uh, the basic principle is clear. So let's start a bit com more complex um, example with the assistant. So for example, we can do a very simple six switchable gearbox. So I don't have to click so much around here. The, this is the kind of, we call this group modeling part. You can just add several groups of um, different elements in one click. So it's easier to create these things and let's add a uh, coupling here and a coupling also here so the power can flow outside and in, in, uh, from the inside to the outside and i would like to prefer to have this at the beginning so just drop it here and i have to fix this a bit okay so let's create some ratios because the kinematics is quite just to show you that the change has an effect. Uh, let's take always something like uh, 90, 90 in, uh, um, teeth in one stage. So let's start with 50, 40, 45, 45. 35 and 55 and vice versa. And here 60, 30. So let's have a look at the 3D now. At least you see the different kind of diameters on it. And uh, yeah, that's it more or less. We didn't don't have yet a speed or a torque because we did not define the kind of switching matrix, but let's click the button and you see you have it here. It's already ordered that the speed is I think increasing. Yeah, you see the speed is absolutely increasing. Okay, this uh, negative sign means that it is the turning is um, counterclockwise and uh, the 
positive sign is clockwise, but it is already here in a matrix, which is fine. So if you want to change, for example, uh, later on uh, the number of T's here from 60 to 30, and there, of course you have a totally different kind of uh, order now here in the kinematics. So the speed would not be in the order, you just recreate here the matrix and it's all fine. And as usual, you can see here, the power is flowing through the system. Here, the first gear, the second gear. The third. The last. Here. So quite simple, so just very easy to use. Another possibility to do these things is yeah, also with this assistant, I just create three, ge three gears, switchable gears in a row and three gears without any component. And again, three switchable gears. Now I have three shafts and uh, I want to add a coupling now. Let's add it here um, at that inner shaft. So I want to start with the coupling here that the input is flowing into the power is flowing into the system here. And then I fix it a bit that they fit together. And of course I can now add another gear um, and shaft for the output. So I'm creating just uh, another shaft calculation with a gear on it and a coupling, which is used then for the output of the power. And we need, of course, here a connection of these parts, which means I just add here another gear. Okay, that's the basic structure, I think in less than two minutes. And then you can add the pairings which exist in the gearbox. And of course we have to show it that it is changing the speed. So let's change a bit the number of T's also. It does not make sense very much, but so at least you can see that the kinematic is working. Give some power and speed and let's guess the matrix. And as you can see, as you see, uh, yeah, this is because the, you have to move the angles that they fit together. This, the system does not know. The kinematics is just uh, working as you see, because if I go through the, the, the gears, it's changing the speed up here, as you can see. So the basic structure and the kinematic calculation is very easy to be done. And now you can detail the angles between the gears and you can do modifications and calculate the safeties and of course, fix the angles here, here in the end. So this is basic, basically the creating of a switchable gearbox with the assistant. So to my last point, the RECSES import and export of a model. First of all, what is Rexes? I did not know it also so uh, a long time. So um, Rexes is uh, an exchange format, which is called a reusable engineering exchange standard by the FVA in GmbA in Germany. And they defined an XML file, which is defining, oh, this is the shaft, this is the bearing, take the bearing with the ID uh, 2311 and uh, take uh, modulus of two millimeters and so on. So you can really describe a shaft geometry, a gear geometry, um, and also bearings and how they are both put together. So they have on the web page some examples to download. Uh, we can have a look uh, at it a short and open it. As you see, it's just an XML file, nothing very interesting, but it's a fully description of the gearbox. So, and what we did, of course, is just implementing now the standard. So we just 
go to import and take an access file. Let's take this one. I think Mr. Yilmaz already showed. Okay, he's, he's saying that they did not use, uh, did not find the peering in his database. That's okay because it's saying, oh, I'm taking instead something else like which is similar and of the same producer and the same thing. And, and then um, the import is finished. So this, this is the sketcher view and this is the 3D view. So you see there's all geometry description inside and also um, the bearings, different kind of bearings and the gears. So, and of course you can use it directly. So I have just imported this from somewhere else and it's uh, already working, you can use it and change it. Yeah, that's it more or less. You Maybe uh, some of you have heard about it already. I think uh, this was an, a Scheffler did, did an, um, also join to this standard, I think in 2019. It was shown at the Hanover Fair also SEV is already using it and we support it also now. So uh, we have also the possibility not, not to import, also to export it. So let's create a simple beer box like uh, we had before. <laughs> and add a special number of teeth, 30 and 50, let's say, and a kinematic. Okay, then it's working fine. It's calculating something, so let's export it. VR access. So we can have a look at it. And you see these there there are the names inside so we have here a, a component called shaft one so we can find this here inside shaft shaft one and there is also the definition of the shaft where it is in the room uh, in the in the space and we have um, yeah, coupling one or beer let's take gear one And there you see the definitions uh, like normal module and uh, yeah, all things which are necessary to define it. So these things we can also use now and re-import it and we can get the same, the same gearbox again. So import, test. And you see we have 50, 30. We have the same speed and torque. It's in fact the same model. So it's a quite good way. It's not nothing very, um, uh, you see, um, uh, very, very hard to, to, to use, but it's, it's easy, easy for, for exchanging data format between different uh, calculation programs, um, also results you may exchange. And um, it's easy to um, don't do uh, redundant work so if you have just uh, a model of your gearbox, you can export it and use it somewhere else also. So this is in fact uh, of my points. Um, so I thank you very much attending the web demo. Um, if you have additional questions, you can write an email to us or we can now do a small round. So if there are many questions, my colleague will read them and I try or he's trying to answer it. And I want to also emphasize that maybe you, if you are in the, in, the, in the area on the 23rd of October, we have a kiss of user meeting here in, in uh, the next area of Bubicon in Rapperswil. And there is also a, a user lab session where you can try and test these new program and give us feedback and do uh, feature suggests, uh, suggestions or um, yeah, just uh, have a look at it and do some um, tests with the new new model module, and uh, yeah. Now let's go to the questions. Yes, hello again. Uh, Jing is here again online. Um, I would like to 
pick up some questions. We have some nice questions for, from all over the world, actually. <laughs> um, maybe, yeah, this is a, a very important question and uh, which uh, I can also answer. So can you add gear calculations that have already been done in Kisoft after you defined the arrangements or in, in Kiss Design? So yes, for the gear calculations, uh, it is possible that we can read them in. Existing gear calculations uh, from in Kisoft, we can read into our Kiss Design model. At the moment, the read in functionality for the shaft, shaft calculations are blocked. It's not possible at the moment, but I guess in future, uh, we would like to give it free so that you can also read in your existing shaft calculations to KISS Design. There it's just, we have some points which we have to consider with the number of elements on the shaft in the shaft calculation and with the naming uh, of the elements in the shaft calculation, like uh, the names which you define in the external uh, KISSoft file for the bearings, for the gears, which if they don't fit to the names in the KISS, in the KISS design model. So all these points we have to consider first. That's why at the moment it's just given free that you can read in the gear calculation files. Yeah. Then um, the second question, this is uh, also for sure a uh, nice question. And also I, me as a customer, I would also ask myself, um, First, uh, if the boundary conditions are also read in, and the sec if, if you read in the gear calculations, so if you're reading just gear calculations for sure, we have just the gear geometry, not the boundary conditions. But um, I guess the point was like, how uh, can we have an exchange from kisses and kiss design? And the second question is, will this replace kisses uh, in future? So. I would like to give the word to Mr. Stangl. Uh, the, first, the first question means uh, that that uh, boundary, about the boundary conditions. Can you precise, please? Uh, yeah. Really, really read in what you mean with read so, in. What I understood here is more about how to have the import possibility from Kisses to Kiss Design, uh -huh. if if this will be possible or not, and then. What about kisses in future? Yeah. So currently, we plan that Rexus is a very good um, module for uh, and very good solution for interchanging the the information. So I think probably the the export from kisses to kiss design will be a proper way to go. Vice versa, we don't have yet a solution. I think, uh, but um, yeah, it depends on some issues we are working on. Of course, it would be nice to have a bidirectional um, possibility. At currently, it's just uh, you can export from Kisses to Kiss Design, but um, I think this is something we have to solve because the design software, of course, should be possible to um, export or be used. Uh, a solution should be used and then to to a more detailed uh, calculation in Kisses. This is, this is the next, next part, of part of the question. question. What is the difference? Of course, of course both are system programs. So mm, his design is looking at the, uh, the whole system. system. Otherwise, you cannot really calculate something. And his design, design also. also. Um, this, is this is really, really the same part. part but, but at the moment, moment there, it, it, um, it really, really ends. ends. So, so we have, have just developed his design currently for creating nice and fast solutions for um, calculating concepts, but not um, it is not long uh, fully feature complete as, as KISSUS. And KISSUS is existing much longer time and has many modules like efficiency, reliability, and so on, load spectrum. And these are things which you don't have yet in KISS design. Maybe then if the, the customers ask for them, um, they will be partitionally part, partly added the next time. But currently, they are really two different programs. They um, maybe in some in some years it may be that they they are they could do the same. But currently, Kiss Design is really meant to be uh, to do a rough um, concept creation first with the power of the Kiss of modules behind, of course. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Stangl. Um, actually, this was, we have always similar question in this direction. 
Um, yes, for example, can I also model uh, belts, belt calculations? Yes, um, at the moment it's not uh, implemented in KISS design, but um, all the KISS soft calculation modules which are available in future, they should be also um, av available in KISS design. Yeah. We started with the most basic ones, which are bevel and cylindrical gears, and of course the bearings. But of course, um, the other things which are there in KISSUS, um, if they are asked for, are interesting, so they will be done soon. Some more? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there is a general question about the REX interface, REX format, uh, which are the, so are the software that can import export this format at the moment? Um, as far as I know, at the moment, there's bearings uh, from um, Schaeffler, Schaeffler uh, and from SCVE, uh, the software solution also, as far as I know, but I don't remember the name at the moment. And the workbench of the FVA, of course, also, they are all uh, have the, uh, the possibility to do this import export thing at the moment. Um, um, I think because it's open source, so everybody could go there and uh, suggest improvements or new objects. I think it's a quite powerful way to to go, but um, probably, or of course, not the only way. Uh, there are also some other standards, which I think in future will gain more more power. But currently, for a whole system, it's a quite good solution, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, again, how maybe last question? Then the rest we can uh, also um, answer by email or yeah later. If you have more questions, you can always um, send them by email to us again, and we can answer them. Yeah. Um, yeah. How can we access to Rex software? <laughs> maybe we have to explain that. Uh, um. I, I think everybody who has a calculation tool, it uh, doesn't matter what, could, could write his own REX as import export. That's the nice thing there because it's open source. So you just have to write a special kind of XML file string and and then you export your, your, your information to the file in a special ordered way. Uh, but there are no, no special programs now, uh, just, the just the one I named. Um, which, I which I know that, that they, they are also using, using it. But, but I think that the, the interesting part, part is that everybody, everybody who wants to use it can use it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, a lot of people are thanking yeah, for the good presentation. So, um, yeah, actually, we are finished with our time frame as well. So, um, like to thank you all for the participation and yeah not to forget also that there will take place the kiss of user meeting on the 23rd of october uh, where you can also test this product kiss design uh, during the user lab session um, we are really looking forward to your participation and yeah thanks again and wish all of you a nice day or evening depending on where you're at the moment and uh, hope to meet you next time. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks again. Thanks. Bye. Bye.